So in this recording, we're going to look at how to use the trend function, and we're also going to autofill once we have some information. So as we see here, for the project that you're working on, partridge in a pear tree, here's some data from 2010, 2011, etc. And we want to project or figure out, using the trend line, what our uh, expected data for 2015, 2016, 2017. Okay, so this applies only uh, for each year, only 2015 changes. Okay, so um, if you are looking for help, of course, you can go to here, help, and function list. Then from function list here, I can just type in trend to get a little bit more information. And notice it says here, trend is an array, which means a list of numbers. Uh, the name is trend, and we're going to use the function trend with parentheses, our known data. So a bunch of Y information, the output stuff, then known data X, a bunch of input stuff, and we're going to focus right here on the new data. We want it to predict what it's going to cost, uh, how much it's going to cost in a particular year. In our case, 2017, uh, but on this spreadsheet, I'm going to use 2015. So learn more shows me what it looks like here. So notice the trend. I'm going to type in trend parentheses. I have some uh, a range of numbers or a list of numbers here. And I've got a range of numbers here. And what we're going to do is add one more thing, a new data. So that's what it's going to look like. So come back over here. So here I'm going to say equals and type in the word trend and begin parentheses. Now over here, I can just select my Y data right here. Now, comma, my input data is the year. What year am I going to be dealing with? That's my input data. And then comma, and I want my new data, which I wanted to predict from the 2015. So if I just select the H1 there, it's automatically going to select whatever number that is right there. So look, when I do end parenthesis and then hit return, it tells me it's going to cost $224. And I'm going to go ahead and format that. Now notice notice the magic here. This is the spreadsheet. If I change this to 2016, notice that increases. Or what if I want to see into the future, 2020 is going to be $270 using this linear model. Okay, But I'm going to change that back to 2015 for our purposes. Now here's the deal. If I do pull down, that looks kind of okay but I don't know if it's exactly right. The problem with this right here is if I click on it now, oh, it's no longer selecting the years. It's now selecting the, the two uh, call, two rows. I'm, I'm the purple here as X, as the input, and this as my output. But I want the purple to stay in the years up here, and I want to have 2015 chosen every time and not the 224, which is what H2 here says. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to go back and delete this, and then I'm going to go back into the formula, and I need to lock some things down. I want the orange to move as I go up and down, but I want the C to stay up here, C1 to be locked in place. So I'm going to go ahead and use my dollar sign before the, the row, the column, and before the row here. It gets more technical than that but I'm just going to uh, lock it all down there. And here, before the column and before the row as well. So notice my number is still the same here, but when I do pull down, now I get 136. And notice when I check the data, ah, look, the orange has shifted down, but the purple has stayed where I wanted as well as the green. So now you can do exactly that and then keep auto-filling down for all your other information. Now this one's going to give me no value because there's all zeros over here and I don't get anything. But there you go. That's how you're going to use the trend function and how you can auto fill.